The Hubberhawks win 5-3 to three today. Lyle, what did you think about the start of Mike Monkle today? Yeah, Mike Mockma did a really nice job today. You look at his start, he went five innings, allowed just two earned runs on the night. He got up to a, like a tough start in the top of the first inning where he allowed three straight hits. Luckily, Pedro Pages threw a runner out on the base pads. But after that, he really settled down. His pitches were working well. He mixed up his off-speed pitches, particularly his breaking balls, along to go to go with that fastball. And ultimately, like we talked about on the postgame show, five innings, two earned runs, that'll get you through in this league, and you leave it up to your offense to do the rest. Chris? Well, Mike Machma, he had two rough innings, but generally he got the job done for Hyannis, which was super important considering that he was able to just keep the keep the deficit at 2 nothing for a while until the Harbor Hawks bats came alive late. That's one of the things I wanted to segue into was in the bottom of the fifth. Of course, when we started getting all those runs, can you kind of just talk about how big of a boost that was for Mike? Well... We're in the Cape. When it rains, it pours here generally, and same goes with these college kids. You come in from your college season, you often don't know what it is exactly you're going to get from them, but today, after a slow start offensively in Game 1, Game 2, they came alive in that fifth inning, and of course, that's a major boost in confidence for Mike as he's out there on the mound doing his best, and having his offense pick him up is huge as he picks up his first Cape League win. Danielle caught up with Mike in the postgame. Thanks, guys. Here with pitcher Mike Machma. Mike, it took you a few pitches to get going. You talked to Pedro and Coach Korn. What started working for you? Well, establishing the fastball in uh, really helped, and then finishing with the slider. Um, I left some change-ups out over the middle of the plate, and they hit them. So we went away from that, focused on the fastball. A little bit of unfamiliarity with you and Pedro, but it seemed to be working well for you. How mm -hmm. do you like that pairing? Uh, I like Pedro a lot. He's a good catcher. He's got a good arm. Uh, he helped me out a lot on that stolen base, too, so it was good. Looking forward in the season, is there any part of your game you're trying to refine while you're here? Uh, definitely control and command of uh, fastball. Um, just trying to be more effective uh, establishing the inside part of the zone. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Well, what were your thoughts about the bottom of the fifth? Yeah, they really just strung together a lot of hits. We talked about it on the postgame show, too. They had 10 hits on the night, but no extra base hits. It shows that you don't have to play long ball to win here in this league or in any baseball game, for that matter. They just found a way to string together hits, everybody refusing to be that last out, and it resulted in a handful of runs. They put up that four spot in the sixth and then another in the seventh to get that fifth run, which ultimately resulted in the final score of 5-3. to three. Now, Lyle, can you talk about the pitching overall today, especially the bullpen? Yeah, you look at the bullpen. Jeremy Randolph who was dominant in his outing. He went two innings, no earned runs on the night. He comes in in a long inning relief role and does a fantastic job. And then you look at that 8-9 combo in the bullpen, Adam Elliott, Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas, one of the best closers in the country this season at Hawaii, was named to the Stopper of the, War, Stopper of the Year Award watch list this season. And he comes in in the ninth after a scoreless inning from Elliott in the eighth, and he just shuts it down. And again, a beautiful throw from Pedro Pages in the ninth to gun out a runner, followed by two strikeouts from Thomas. Chris? Well, Dylan Thomas closing the door for Hyannis. This could be something we get used to as a broadcast team because he looked very comfortable out there. He gave up a hit and an earned run in his first inning of work with Hyannis in the opener, but after the rainout day, he got settled in and was lighting up the radar gun, probably getting around the low to mid 90s with his fastball and really keeping hitters off balance. Absolutely. Well, that is all here. I'm Robert Marchand with Lyle Goldstein and Chris Lucy. So long.